Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I'm excited to talk about Blockstack, which is the easiest way to build decentralized blockchain applications. So I've got a few guests here from Blockstack to talk about the project today. So welcome uh, Maneeb and Hank. I'm gonna hand it over to Maneeb to talk about you know, your involvement with the project and maybe explain to us a little bit about Blockstack and why it's the easiest way to build blockchain decentralized applications. Hey everyone, uh, really excited to be here. So I'm Maneeb, uh, I'm co-founder of Blockstack. It's an open source project started around five years ago. And I'm also the CEO of Blockstack PPC which is the company that is building some of the core protocols and the developer tools that, that you learn about. So Blockstack is, is the easiest way to, for building blockchain applications, mostly because we have reduced all of the complexity that goes into a full stack for building applications. And the developers don't need to learn any new languages. If you know JavaScript and if you, if you know how to do web programming, you can just plug in our developer libraries and just like start storing data, start interacting with our blockchain, and basically very quickly get started with, with your applications. And it's not just about, so around like five years of hardcore R&D work went into this platform. We are a group of computer scientists from Princeton. I finished my, uh, my PhD there while I was uh, working on Blockstack. And the interesting thing about the project is that it's not just about the ease for developers and quickly ramping up decentralized applications, there's also a built-in incentives mechanism. So think of it this way, that in our blockchain, uh, there is an allocation of token distribution, it's a fairly significant allocation, that goes to developers who are building the top applications on top. And, and, and there, there is a, a semi-automated mechanism for, for uh, ranking these applications. So you can actually, we're running that uh, in a pilot stage these days and around $100,000 uh, worth of uh, awards are actually flowing through that system every month uh, right now. Uh, so it's a very interesting way of having uh, a shared stake in the success of the ecosystem and having the right incentives to participate in, in building towards a truly decentralized ecosystem. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to hang, uh, hand it over to Hank, uh, who's a core developer on the project, and he will have a walkthrough of these developer libraries and how easy it is to get started. Awesome, thanks Manu, um, awesome intro. Yeah, as Manu said, I'm Hank. I'm one of the core developers at Blockstack. So I help build out some of our developer tools and some of our consumer facing projects. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some slides and do a little walkthrough of what the whole Blockstack ecosystem is like, what some of our core aspects of the project are, what some of the awesome apps uh, that have built on are, and um, some of the programs that we have and uh, resources where you can um, get started. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. So, um, as Manip said, we're Blockstack, and we're we're a platform for building uh, decentralized blockchain apps. And there's two main um, aspects when I explain how Blockstack works. Um, we have uh, your Blockstack ID, which is our entire identity system. Um, it's all tied to on-chain names, so that you fully own your identity. Um, you can, you know, describe it however you like, and you can use that whenever you log into apps that are built on top of Blockstack. Um, and so these IDs are persisted on the chain, um, so you can uh, pay for them, you can even create um, top-level domains, so it's almost like a whole DNS system. And then we've even built a mechanism where users can create a Blockstack ID without paying anything, um, while still having full control over your ID, we will um, front the cost of that on-chain transaction. And that's really part of making uh, your app as easy to use for anyone who wants to get started. When you register uh, uh, a name on Blockstack, it is actually an on-chain name. So we have a whole set of protocols where you can register names, you can transfer names. Um, and you know, as you see, we have the uh, Blockstack Explorer here. And so you can go to explore.blockstack.org and really see all the different names that have been registered. I think there's about 100,000 names registered at this point. And each name can you know, be tied to a profile. So you know, I have my avatar and name. Um, it's all owned by a specific address and your private key so that you have full control over it, no one else. Um, and it's even tied to the apps that you use as well. 
And then the second main aspect of Blockstack is Gaia. Gaia is our storage layer. And it allows anyone to essentially store their data that they're using within apps wherever they want. So Gaia hubs act as sort of a, a hub where apps can follow one single protocol. Um, and then depending on how you've configured it with your ID, it can be stored wherever you want it to be. So we have adapters for Google Drive and Dropbox and IPFS and S3. And we're always building out more uh, support for more storage drivers on the back end. And this is all tied to your Blockstack ID. So when you visit a Blockstack app or when you're developing an app, you don't have to worry about where the data is stored on the back end. It's all one single protocol for fetching and storing data. So I'm going to show you a couple um, apps that are built on top of Blockstack because I think it you know, shows how easy to use it is and how uh, the type of complex applications that you can build. One of the best examples is Graphite. Graphite is a decentralized document editor. Uh, it's quite similar to like a Google Docs um, suite. Uh, you can create text documents. You can create spreadsheets. Um, you can even just store arbitrary files on it like a Google Drive. And their text editor is amazing because it actually supports uh, multi-user collaboration. Um, so you can, so by default, all your data is entirely encrypted. No one can see it, not even, any, not even the Graphite server uh, or Blockstack. Um, but you have fine-grained control, so I can say, I would like to share this document with Munid. And then he can hop right in, log in with his ID, and then we can edit this document in real time. All of the data is still stored on Gaia, so if I ever wanted to export my data or if the Graphite app ever shut down, I'd still have full control over it. BitPatron is a newer app. Um, it's kind of a decentralized Patreon alternative. Um, so you can build campaigns and pages where you would like to have people support you. And what's great about this is that um, there's no centralized layer to really control the experience. And it's built on top of cryptocurrency payments. So you can pay with Bitcoin and you can pay with Lightning and other cryptocurrencies soon. And the awesome thing about being able to use Lightning is that you can really use uh, microtransactions. Um, so with BitPatron, you know, or traditional credit card based systems, there's so many fees that it's hard to do really small levels of, of payments. Um, but on BitPatron, there is none. You could even go less than a cent if, if that's what you wanted. Um, and then it has all the features that you would expect, such as you know, supporters getting access to private content and collaboration with um, the campaign owner. Um, it, it's great, and it's new, and it's uh, been finding some good traction. Sigil is a blog maker. It's got a great UI, um, really simple design. And you can do um, you know, what you would expect from like a medium type of thing. You can create um, your own blog, and then you can create posts on that um, and share them with anyone so that they can discover and read your, 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 your blog posts. Of course, before you publish it, it's all encrypted um, and stored in your guide, so you can use it on multiple devices, but ensure that it's private until you explicitly decide to share. Block Vault really highlights um, the type of private apps that you can build on Blockstack. Again, because everything is encrypted by default with no single server having access to it, um, Block Vault allows you to do what you might do with like a one password, um, where you can store passwords or you can store secure notes. Again, it's got a great um, handy user interface that's you know um, intuitive to use, but you don't have to worry about, um, uh, you know, for example, like a one password ever being hacked. Um, you can inspect all the data being sent back and forth from your Guy Hub and ensure that it is encrypted and it's encrypted with your private key. Banter is a fun new app that um, I personally built. And we wanted to highlight some of the features that you can build on Blockstack using a, a somewhat newer framework that we call Radix. Um, it's really built for applications that need multiple users uh, to, be, to be able to aggregate data from multiple users and display it and query it in one single feed. So it's kind of like a Twitter. Um, you know, you can make uh, short messages and you can like posts and everything. Um, but we wanted to highlight uh, some of the newer features so it's totally real time. Um, you, you know, you can open a WebSocket and get real time um, messages from other people using them as soon as it happens. It has notifications. Um, so if you opt into notifications, you can uh, get an email 
when someone mentions you or someone interacts with you, or if you want to get, for example, like a daily digest of recent posts. Um, and that code is all on GitHub. And again, we really just wanted to show what you can do and, and maybe make this a place where you can um, take some of these features and use it in your own app. And so I'll actually show you how that works just to see, um, you know, what Blockstack apps look like in the wild. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, so we're on Banter right now. The URL is banter.pub. Um, we actually just kind of put this out yesterday. And uh, so, you know, still building the community, but it's really just a fun place to kind of learn about Blockstack and especially as a developer to dev into the code. But um, when, when you use any Blockstack app and you go through the authentication process, you get sent to the Blockstack browser. This is um, something that could be run as a native app or if you don't want to install the native app, um, we have a cloud hosted version that stores your keys um, locally in the device. Um, but it's essentially the one hub where you can manage your private keys, you can update your profile, add social proofs, and then of course authenticate into different apps. Um, so in this case, Banter is asking me to see my basic info and publish data for this app so that others can discover it. And you can see all the IDs that I have registered under this keychain. Um, so I can choose which, ones, which one to use. Um, I've got a few here, I'm gonna use this one. And then I'm redirected back to Banter, um, where I can make a post, um, say something like. And yeah, the great thing is I think that it behaves just like you would expect from a centralized application, but we're taking advantage of all the benefits of, uh, block, that Blockstack provides in a decentralized way. So it's easy to use, it's fast, um, but, it still is controlled by the ID, that the, the identity that you own and that you control, and your data is still all stored in Gaia. Um, you know, so you can always have full control over what you wanna share, what you want to maybe delete, um, or maybe what you would like to export in the future. So that's um, a bunch of the apps that you know, I've chosen to highlight, but we have a lot more. Um, and we've built app.co as sort of a DAP marketplace where you can go and learn about dApps and find um, dApps that you're interested in. So if you go to app.co slash Blockstack, you'll see all the, um, the apps that have been built on top of Blockstack, but it's not just for that. We have apps for Ethereum and Tron and IPFS and a lot of the other um, decentralized app uh, platforms as well. Um, you can kind of go in and, and see the details and of course, you know, go to the website and sign in. If you're a developer and you want to get started, um, probably the best place to go is uh, docs.blockstack.org. This is our one hub that can connect you to um, our, our references and our tutorials. You can even, the search bar here connects to everything. So you, if you search for something, you can go to our forum, which is at forum.blockstack.org, um, and our GitHubs and everything you might be interested in. And if you do want to get started, we have app mining. App mining is this cool incentive program that we built to try and grow the number of uh, great apps that are built on Blockstack. So as it says on the title here, every month we pay out $100,000 US to the best apps and we pay in Bitcoin. Um, and we have a complex ranking system that we built in collaboration with a few game theorists at Princeton and some other universities so that we have a few third-party reviewers that each use their own expertise to rank apps. You know, we aggregate all that data, and depending on how high you rank, you, uh, that determines how much you, you make. So the number one app uh, every month gets $20,000, uh, and it sort of exponentially decreases from there, but everyone earns something, and it's, um, it's a nice way to be able to uh, you know, compare how well you're doing against the other apps, you get a lot of feedback from our different reviewers during this process to be able to improve your app. And um, hopefully you'll be able to make some money in the meantime to fund development. The very first starting point, if um, <clears throat> this is your first time on, on Blockstack, is our zero to dap tutorial. You can find that directly from docs.blockstack.org. And it's um, super uh, explanatory. It really walks you through everything that I've talked about today in terms of what Blockstack is, um, what the pieces of our system are, and then it walks you through building your first Blockstack app. Um, it's really polished so that it works on every platform. Um, and no matter what your level of experience is, you should be able to complete this in you know, oftentimes uh, an hour, much less. At the end, if you finish the tutorial, 
um, there's some instructions for how to submit that and we'll send you a cool t-shirt. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for that, Hank. That was a super educational presentation. I know I learned a lot. I'm really excited about, you know, all the tools that you all built, um, to, you know, build out the decentralized web. And I'm excited to introduce this to my audience to get more developers on board, um, to kind of support this effort and, you know, further block stack. So before we kind of wrap up here today, is there anything else that you guys, you know, kind of want the audience to know? Yeah, so I think one comment would be that uh, BlockStack really is a full decentralized computing stack. And, and, you know, something like five years of hard work went into it. So it looks very simple uh, because we've been able to fine tune our libraries and make it like fun and easy for developers to play with. But, but uh, it, it's, it's interesting to keep in mind that this wasn't easy. Like getting here was yeah. actually a, a pretty uh, hard journey. Yo, I can imagine. It looks like you all have done a lot of great work and you know, everything looks very polished, very refined. And, you know, I think most developers here watching know that building things with kind of tech at this stage is, is challenging and you all have done a great job with this platform. So anyways, guys, I really enjoyed having you on the channel today. Um, everybody join me from wherever you are <laughs> in thanking our guests for coming on today. Leave a comment down in the comment section below if there's any questions that you have about the project. We'll be kind of monitoring those to get feedback. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And go check out Blockstack. I'm going to put links down in the description below about how you can get started. And uh, again, thank you all guests for coming on the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.